is the third installment in the new features for version 3.8 of Darktable. Let's go. Hi and welcome to episode 103 of Understanding Darktable. We are continuing our investigation of all of the new features and tweaks that have been added to Darktable 3.8. Let's get on with it. The composition guides from the crop module are now available globally and no longer require the crop module to be activated. The Canon RAW CR3 format is now supported. See the list of supported cameras in the section below. This support is provided by LibRAW and requires at least EXIV2 version 0.27.4 with BMFF support activated. The Color Checker Profiling tool introduced in Darktable 3.4 as part of the Color Calibration module is now normalized patch-wise in exposure to discard the effect of uneven lighting and fall-off when shooting color checkers handheld and on location. This robustly decreases the residual average DE after calibration and noticeably helps to recover natural dark blues while preventing yellow shifts in the highlights. Other new features and changes. The scopes module, previously named histogram, can now be moved to the left panel. This does require a restart. A new vertical waveform scope option has been added. The LUT3D module has been moved so it appears after filmic in the pixel pipe. New magic wand icons are now used for the auto-tune actions in the tone equalizer module. A preference has been added to invert the behavior of mouse scroll up and down on drawn mask attributes. At the same time and for consistency, the scroll up action has been set to increase all mask attributes by default. The split toning module now displays the hue in degrees for consistency with other modules. Rejected images in the light table view are now dimmed for clarity. An option has been added to show all modules in the history within the active module group regardless of whether or not they are currently enabled. A search box has been added in preset preferences and shortcuts. Uh, once again, the developers have just come through with flying colors. This app just continues to get better and better all the time. Hopefully that has helped get you up to speed. Obviously, I've still got a lot of, uh, you know, research to do, getting my head around the diffuse and sharpen module and, you know, the MIDI control stuff. There's a few things I still need to look into. And I hope to get back to producing content a little more regularly for this channel. I said at the beginning of episode 101 that I would explain to you later why it's been four months where I went quiet. Uh, as I've explained to my patrons, 2021 has been an absolute horror of a year for me. Uh, COVID has been the least of my concerns this year. Uh, you know, my nan passed away in April, my dad passed away in August, I, you know, got retrenched from my audio job in July, um, I then picked up, you know, this new job driving a delivery truck, which is a complete change of scene for me, you know, after three and a half decades as an audio engineer, and that, you know, that's really taken some adjusting to. You know, when you've done something for 34 years, as I did as a professional audio engineer, you know, going to do something like driving a delivery truck just seems like a, a step down, you know? Uh, like, I, I don't mean any disrespect to anyone else who drives a truck, you know? I, I, you know, it's a, it's a good job. I, I love it. But I kind of felt at the beginning, it's like, well, you know, any monkey could do this. I actually now think, yeah, no, not any monkey could do this. But anyway, so, so there was a little bit of a, you know, 
adaptation required on my part mentally, just getting into the headspace of this job. And along with that, you know, a massive reduction in what I earn per hour. Uh, as a truck driver, I get about 40% of what I used to get per hour as an audio engineer, you know. So believe me, there are times when I think, oh, I really should go back to doing audio. But the problem is, if I want to go back to doing audio work, it would mean commuting to Sydney again. And that's what I really wanted to get away from. I just don't want to do that commute anymore. You know, the delivery job is a 12 minute commute from where I live, you know, to get a, another audio job, I've got to go back to Sydney and I'm looking at minimum one hour commute each way, minimum. And if it's in the center of the city, then, you know, it's close on an hour, 40, hour 45 each way. And I just don't want to do that anymore. I'm over it. I've been doing that for 10 years. And I hate that commute. I'm sick of it. And then there was all of the debacle with Dad's will. The guy who was meant to be executor didn't want to be the executor to the estate. And I was the only child from Mum and Dad. So he said, are you happy to be the executor? And I said, yeah, sure. And so we signed the legal documents. I was going to become the executor to the estate. My auntie in Western Australia then snail mailed a copy of the will to me and it got lost in the mail and so then that just caused a massive headache and that has been like the main thing that's kept me from creating any content you know over the last four months i i really had my hands full just trying to get through all of dad's estate I had very limited knowledge of what assets he had because he lives on the other side or lived on the other side of the country from me. He was on the West Coast. I'm on the East Coast. It's three and a half thousand kilometers away. And I couldn't go there because the West Australian Premier had closed the border to the rest of the country because he's had virtually no cases of COVID in the state in the two years of this pandemic. So, you know, I kind of understand his position. He wanted to keep that record in place, but it meant... Here we are in December. I still haven't been able to bury my dad who died in August. I've had his body cremated and I can't go and bury him because I can't get into the state. And, you know, all of that has just been aggravating, frustrating, sad. And, yeah, it just really just, just, just about sapped my will to live, to be honest. Um, and so, yeah, the content creation just got pushed to the side and that's why I've been quiet for so long. Thankfully now, uh, all of the stuff regarding dad's estate, that's all been put to bed. That's been sorted. All that remains now is for me to be able to actually go to Western Australia to bury my father. When that will happen, that's anybody's guess. We've got this new idiot premier in New South Wales who has decided that, ah, to hell with COVID, you know, just open up everything. It'll be good for the economy. The problem is we now have escalating numbers of cases that are going up logarithmically and it's not good for the economy because there are so many businesses who can't function because staff are either close contacts of someone who had COVID or they've got COVID themselves. And so, yeah, it's, it's just a mess. It really is. Um, <laughs> and as things get worse in New South Wales, the West Australian Premier, who obviously sleeps with the light on at night, he's just going to become more knee-jerk reactive and say nobody from New South Wales can come into Western Australia because New South Wales is a high-risk state because of their attitude towards COVID which is cavalier at best. So, yeah, it's just been one hell of a year. It really has. Anyway, you probably didn't want to know all that, and my apologies if that's the case. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I will leave it there. Like I said, I, I do plan to get back into creating content more regularly for this channel. And I guess now that 3.8 is out, it, it certainly has given me a 
you know, a, a swathe of new material that I can now generate uh, videos on, you know, the new modules, the things that have changed in old modules, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So hopefully <laughs> we'll get back to something approaching, you know, at least a video every two weeks. That, that'll be the aim. So we'll see how we go. All right, people, it is the week between Christmas and New Year as I am recording this. So I will say to you, I hope you had a Merry Christmas and I wish you a Happy New Year for 2022. It has to be better, doesn't it? <laughs> it can't be like this again. All right, people, all the best and I will catch you in the next one.